I knew it too. Everybody. You know, it's a weird game because they they have two really good players, and then they got some good length and really good athletes around them. Kind of surprised me how athletic some of their other guys were. Um, and then they had ten days, so you don't know like what you're gonna get. Um, they played well, and they they have they have nothing to lose, you know. So they're they're on game twenty seven or whatever they are. I don't know, twenty seven. It's a hard game, like, and they they do things that bother us, you know. Their quickness bothered us, and we just hung in there and mud wrestled. So we were good enough defensively to win, made enough plays when it mattered, but. I think all the games are going to kind of be like that until we start making a couple. We, we had some open looks we just didn't make. So that's that. You mentioned defensive plays, and you've talked a lot about your team's defense lately. Those two plays in the last 20 seconds, the a defensive rebound by uh, Fusini and then the block by Dixon, how key were those to you guys being able to hold on to the win? I thought I challenged Fusini at halftime. I thought he had a terrible first half, and I challenged his competitiveness. And he, one thing about him, he's been in so many games that he rallied himself and played a good second half, which really helped us. And then Dixon, Dixon just keeps getting better. He's, he's a good player, other than his whirly dervish layup that he almost blew at the end of the game. But, but he's a, he's a greyhound. He's an athletic guy. He played well. He's capable of being much better too. He's just scratching the surface, really. What well, we came in on the board of heavy favorites. So, how much did you emphasize, fellas? This is not going to be an easy game. Well, when you have offensive struggles, which we've had, no game's easy. And you know, they well, Northwestern's going to play in the NCAA tournament, probably have a decent seed. They, they want what they went by 14 there or 12 or something. I don't know. They won easily. No, they only won by two. Two, maybe. I don't know. But anyway, they played Kansas State tough. They, they're a good team. Like they, he's a good coach. You know, he's got a good, he's got an assistant coach that's been around the block for years. Uh, Scott Spinelli, who was with Jim Christian at Boston College. So like they got, they got a good coaching staff. They did some good things. They got good athletes, and they got two really good players. And the rest of them are pretty good too. They're good role guys. So, you know, it's a tough game. It's no different to playing Fordham or St. Bonaventure or any of them, really. It was the same type of game. Uh, curious, just from a scouting perspective, Chicago State might play most of their games on the road, and they've had a share of either top 100 opponents or teams in the 200, 300. So, not many in the 100s at all. So, there weren't many teams comparable to Ford Duquesne. Outside of just knowing who their top players are, how difficult was it to necessarily scout them and know how good they would be against a team like Duquesne since they haven't played many like them? I don't think it was that difficult, Tristan, really. I I watched them on tape and I knew they could play. I mean, uh, I knew they were going to switch everything, you know, which again makes you have to try to score inside, which we didn't do a very good job of. And finally, we said the hell with it and just spread out and drove them. You know, so you only have two op options when they switch like that. Either you got to score inside, or you you got to spread out and drive them. I would prefer to throw it inside because it's a little bit easier. But we didn't, we couldn't score in there, so we couldn't get it in there half the time. They were tough, and uh, so then finally we just spread out and drove. So yeah, I I knew I did I knew it was going to be a pretty hard game, I, and it wasn't like we weren't. Like juiced up to play them, we were ready to play. I felt like our guys were ready to play. We just, I mean, we shot three for twenty from the three line, so that's two get well. We go one for thirteen last game and three for twenty this game, and still win. You should be counting your lucky stars. Um, this is this is a two part. So I did a, a sort of patterns emerge at least statistically from what you, from what you guys have done so far. Uh, Wesley Cardet, poor game from him, two of thirteen. But a lot of the guards you guys have played so far have had rough games, including Reynolds and Kings, etc. But uh, Deshaun Corbett, who's their de facto four or five man because of lack of size, had an outstanding game, and you've dealt with this with Gray and Holmes and others. Is there a reason why you guys have done so well against top perimeter players, but sort of struggled against the sort of the forwards on the team, or is that just a, a weird pat, uh, a, a freak of nature? 
you can sit there and say it's a freak of nature, but when it continually happens, then, then you have to start understanding that you have some issues at that spot. Um, you know, we, we were going into the game thinking we were going to play DeMichael on Cordette. And then we, at the last minute, we decided, you know, Jimmy's, Jimmy's kind of locked down Eric Reynolds and some of those guys. And then we played good ball screen defense on him, too. Dave Dixon did a really good job of funneling it. And we did a good job. We kind of played two guys on him. You know, so we did a good job there. Um, but we've had trouble with bigger, stronger guys, man. We've, you know, we, we've had a hard time with it. You know, and then it was a hard game for Dushan because they just spread him out. And so I couldn't really play him. If you, if you can't, because he didn't score it around the rim, I wasn't gaining any benefit by playing him because we, he couldn't guard, it, guard their quicker perimeter guys. Because they're basically playing at least half the game with, with uh, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Cor Corbett at the five. So that's a tough matchup because he's a, he's a perimeter He's really a perimeter guy that can maul you inside as well. So I thought Trey Williams was our best bet, but Fusini, and he beat up Fusini in the first half. I thought Fusini did a little bit better in the second half. It's a good question. It's pretty obvious. That's why we started doubling the post a little bit more. Uh, it's a, it was a little harder tonight, but he he got him off the board a lot of times, I thought, right? He, he got a lot of second shots. And that's the other issue we've had. Is you know, I think if you if we did a better job rebounding the ball, our defensive numbers would have gone from 120 to 70 to 50. Like that's probably our biggest weakness if you look at like our our defensive numbers is rim protection and uh, and second shots and fouls. So you got any ideas how to fix that? <laughs> Yeah, I think you did. You did fine the second half. I think the five spot is is want to find somewhere to help. But the rebounding issues with Williams at the five against this athletic team that that was why the game was so close. Well, and they got they they we were up twenty eight to twenty one and we didn't rebound the ball, right? And all of a sudden it's twenty eight all at halftime. If it's twenty eight twenty one at halftime or thirty to twenty three at halftime, we're probably in a lot better shape. Emotionally, because we we could we could defend enough that we could stay ahead of it, but we didn't stay ahead of the curve. Um, obviously, you were using Day Day back in with his minutes, but um, did he play tonight? Did he force you to play him more tonight? What can you say about him? Well, I thought he was a little bit better tonight. I thought he had one bad stretch, you know, where he was a little impatient and pounded it a little bit. But overall, I thought he was better. Uh, but again, like nobody can sit out 12 days, practice two days, and really be that good. And then he only got another couple of days in a practice. So it's going to take him another week. You know, and I give him credit, of, you know, that, you know, we, he allowed us to, let, to bring him off the bench. You know, he's a guy that started almost every game in his whole career. So he could have been bristly, and he wasn't. Is that a word? <laughs> he could have been. Is that a word? You're a good writer. I'm a writer. I don't he could have been a little bit ticked <laughs> off, but he wasn't. So, so uh, coach, the first time you used the phrase mud wrestling, I believe, was in early December against St. Peter's, and since then you've probably said it four or five times after games or press conferences. Do you think that's what this team's identity is going to have to be through the rest of conference play to win the games? Uh, I think we're gonna. I think we're better offensively than we've shown. I, I do. I don't think we're as bad as like we, we we look right now. But we we certainly, at least we have an identity now. Now we we hit a streak last year where we we were really good defensively. I think most of you remember, and then we kind of caved in at the end of the year, right defensively, and that's when we didn't win as much as we were early in the year. Um, and part of it was we had some injuries, like R.J. Gunn, you know, had a bad foot and really couldn't move as well. And Roadcrop had some issues. But, but I think that's going to be key for us because no matter who we play, if we defend at a high level, we're going to be in the game. And, you know, 
the one thing we did tonight that I think helped us is we, we rested Jimmy until crunch time. And this is the best game he played at the end all year, you know, because he was a little bit more rested. Now it's it's hard because you're sitting him in at crucial times and you can, but I think that's where, you know, having Matush and Jake and those guys have shown us that, you know, we can, we can rest those guys. Keith, another question, another Andre question for you. Was it dictated more so him coming in tonight on what you mentioned earlier about trying to get some production in the post? Was it keeping him engaged, next man up mentality? What did you see from him tonight, and what was the decision on bringing him in? I thought he did a good job when we put him in, considering the circumstances that he hasn't played very much. Um, I didn't play him to keep him engaged, to answer your question. Like I played it because I thought he could help us win the game. So um, I think he's he's talent wise he's certainly good enough to play. Um, but I felt like that you know I felt like that we were spread too thin and none of them were going to play any good. So that's that's really the decision why we kind of went away from him. We we went away from Trey Williams early in the year. And then, you know, Bussini's been pretty constant pretty much most of the year. So, I mean, I didn't think Trey Williams played very good tonight either. So we got to keep looking and certain nights, like they have to, like last game, Dushan carried us at the end of the game. Tonight, it was just a hard game for him. So we went a different direction. I'm sure he's not very happy about it, but I'm just trying to win the game. Like, I can't like, keep people engaged it's that's just and now I'm not saying it's easy on those guys but you can't coach to keep people happy or or, or worry about their feelings now I, I feel bad you know like whether they believe that or not I do feel bad that when guys don't play I have a son that like I told you many times that he's miserable when he don't play so like I get it and I played, so I know how it feels not to play as well, especially when you're older, you know, so. But I can't coach like that. That's not fair to the team. Coach, 41 of your 65 points today were scored from off the bench. Now, I know that number is a little bit deceiving with Day Day usually being a starter, but he, he still was off the bench today. Um, what can you say about the boost you, you got from your non-starters? Well, Dixon's one of our best players. I mean, it's, it's, it's he certainly is a starter. The only reason we don't start him is he fouls so much that I'm scared to death, but we won't be able to get him in the game. He fouled again tonight, which one of them wasn't his fault. They didn't throw him a ball that put him in a terrible position. So we're not the same team when Dave doesn't play. He, he really helps us, you know, like, like Rick McFadden always says, our assistant coach, he says, Dave, something's going to happen when Dave goes in. And it certainly does. Sometimes it's bad, but most of the time it's pretty good. His activity level's good. So we got a lot off our bench. You know, you figure you're playing Fusini Drame, you play uh, Dave Dixon and Day uh, uh, Day off the bench. So really, it's almost like three starters. So you should score more than most people off your off your bench under those circumstances. It's not all bad, like, you know, it's not all bad just to do that because the first four minutes of every game are garbage anyway a lot of times, mm -hmm. right? Now, you can, it could cost you the game, but most of the time it's just feeling each other out and it's garbage. So you're better off to bring some pop off that bench. What else you got? That's it. That's an interesting color combination tonight, Zach. Like, usually you match, but today, please. Orange shoes, red pants, purple shirt. Partridge in a pear tree. I guess so. <laughs> Dave, how you doing? 